Okay guys, once again, exciting episode here, Trammel Crow, TRE. It's really meaningful in times when the market is changing or if you wanna be doing this for a long time, right? We talk about having staying power and not being a fly-by night. I see it time and time again. People that get really active and passionate and then they're gone a year later. At TRE, we plan to be here 20 years from now. So we wanna use these notes to the best of our ability. This is gonna be an exciting episode, exclusive document. We have a lot to tell you. It's the second to last, there'll be one more after this. But what I'm gonna do is tell you what's going on here. This is now a switch. This is things that we did right. That's exciting. And then there's a lot of notes. So they kind of came up with uh, one document of things that they did right, and then multiple of the partners took notes. So I'll read their notes. A lot of it's in cursive and it's really, really small. So I, I probably uh, can't read those ones clearly, I'll try. Uh, not that I can't read cursive. I write in cursive myself, uh, but it's tiny. And so then I'll, uh, I'll read that, give you my opinion, and then we have one more for the last episode um, of the Tremel Crow Company series. TRE, baby, let's get it. We're gonna dive in right now. So, get you a drink, sit back, and relax. This is uh, from Gary. He sent it to the rest of the company, and here's his email. Thank you so much for supplying me with the information of all the quote, mistakes I've made requests. While reviewing all this information during my vacation in Vail, that sounds pretty cool, I realized this was a first step in a four step exercise. The other steps are as follows. What did we do right? What were the influences that encouraged us to make the mistakes? Are there any universals, any axioms that could be applied to our business in good times and in bad? Attached, you will find some straw man proposals on step one and two above. I would appreciate it if you could check yes or no if you agree with each of the line items. Please take a pencil and delete, add to it, critique any of the straw mans. I look forward to your reply. CC, Office of Managing Partners, Don Williams, Trammel Crow, Distribution, George Lipp, Rob Farrell, Mark Myers, John Walsh, Jim Buchanan, Mark Palmer, Mark Jaffe, Robert Watson, Marty Farnsworth, Mike Polacek, Barry Henry, Jim Hendricks, Steve Meyer, Sandy Gottesman, Richard Hill, Mike Birnbaum, Paul Silverman, Bill Rothaker, Paul Barker. The reason I read all those names, guys, is because those are people that created this web, Sandy Gossman for one example, um, that went and started their own companies after this all happened. Don Williams, that's a big name right there. So let's dive in right now. Things that we did right. We consistently outperformed the market in all respects, particularly in leasing and renewals. We did prepare for a market reversal. We raised 150 million of cash through sales and JVs as a unit Tremel Crow Company Southwest was the last development company in the area to run out of cash. We did not take on P&L debt on big deals larger than 20 million. We joint ventured most major land positions and large projects. We just never expected for or planned for a massive force majeure market shift. Force majeure, act of God. We did not cut costs, remove marginal players and got into acquisitions in the third party business but a little late. Most importantly, we had great people. We have held our line. Not a single man in the face of the most ad adverse circumstances to occasion our industry since the Great Depression bucked or ran. While often we focus on what's wrong with TCC, we need to take pause and remember that there's a hell of a lot of good people in this company that made out, they're made out of the right stuff. Quite possibly, if we had not done the right things above, we could have lost the company. They were a powerhouse. It was like the Yankees. And the Yankees came crashing down, but they made it out alive. What were the circumstances that made our mistakes seem like a good idea at the time? Success lulled us into a sense of complacency. In some cases, almost feeling bulletproof. Everything worked. Leasing, 
sales, values, zoning. We were on a roll. We had great experienced people. We had liquidity. We had capital markets chasing us. There was an incredible supply of money. We felt that there was always a backdoor buyer for our projects. We let land and refinancing costs sometimes dictate what we developed. The company culture lionized growth and demanded that we be aggressive. We are the number one developer. Most assets, most square feet, record leasing year, new offices, etc. In the history of the world, the seller is wrong. In the history of the world, the seller is wrong. I don't know. In City X, we got 70% of market share, but why did we miss the other 30%? We always carry a significant inventory of space to provide expansion for our tenants and to keep pressure on the competition. We buy land to frustrate the competition and to control our future. If Partner X can carry land, build big office businesses and two-story service centers or fashion retail centers, why can't I? Our compensation system demanded that we grow. We were pushed hard by our young people who wanted their share of the boom. We let relationships obscure objectivity. We didn't use tough love. In the euphoria of a hot market, we tended to ignore true market fundamentals. We didn't have or prudently evaluate, evaluate good information. Often, our market research was last week's leasing meeting. What were the mistakes that seemed like a good idea at the time? We let success lull us into high images and attend, attendant high overheads. Some costs were fixed like fancy offices with high rents. Pride kept us from cutting projects, debt, rent, and overhead in a timely manner. Psychologists have proven that the human psyche will take enormous risks before it will admit to a loss. Press the bet on the last hole, hidden odds for the house in Vegas, etc. We tended to focus on great real estate while ignoring the storm clouds of overbuilding and increasing debt and overhead burdens. If we didn't buy it, the competition would. We tended to drift away from direct contact with the market and became unduly influenced by our staff, the brokerage community, and the press, all of who have a tendency to be myopic. We were lulled into a sense of security by the EVBS with its many trap doors, deferred PITI, negative leverage debt, non-market determined cap rates, non-recognition of sales costs and prepayment penalties, the EVBS is only one snapshot of a full length movie. EVBS, whoever knows what that is, please let us know in the comments. EVBS. The hot market kept us focused on the future, the next deal, while we often ignored prudent asset management. All right, so this is a little tricky because everyone took their notes. I'm gonna read you guys uh, some of the notes. Uh, somebody added, our own success, hiring methods, MBAs with small amount of business experience, allowed a relatively non-rigorous management style, allowed us to do things that most experienced business people would not do. We needed a larger mix of experienced people to challenge our direction and emphasis. We never said no enough, stop. So one of the things that they were uh, famous for was they would bring in MBAs and pay a minimum wage or nothing. And these guys would basically have to, you know, acknowledge that they were working at a great company and that they weren't trying to get paid every month, but they wanted to learn, they wanted to be there. So it was really interesting, uh, but they said they wish they would have had a more of a mix and not just a bunch of new people because they were just taking orders and following what they told them to do. We underwrote our projects in a prudent manner, allowing for enough margin that even though the market shifted, instead of losing money, we were still able to break even. That's good, right? So they were buying right even when the market was hot. Failed to follow the old retail axioms of the markdown and the checkpoint. Mark it down and move it out. No likes to buy merchandise except in the bargain basement. I don't know about that one. The deal we thought would solve our problems the most was the one that didn't work out. So they were betting on a big deal to uh, help them get bailed out, it seems like. 
lulled into security by the huge net worth of the senior partners rather than following on, focusing on liquidity, cash flow, and other business fundamentals. Yeah, net worth is great, but the fundamentals are extremely important. Okay, I personally don't ever think we plan for a 10% shift emotionally. It was kind of a security blanket to raise all of our cash on. Didn't listen hard enough to our lenders' concerns that our contingent liabilities were so huge and complicated that we couldn't guarantee them. Shouldn't we have worried enough to identify them? Hard to build a team. Sorry guys, these are hard to read. Kind of told you that a little bit. Um, yeah, this, these are, uh, so the date that this was, this email was sent was April 25th, 1989. So it wasn't that long ago, right? So it was the crash of the 80s that really set these people back. Last one we got here, three points. We worked hard at keeping the morale of the people up. Leasing agents and marketing principals as long, as long, along with employees who were not demoralized. When we did have problems to face, we faced them. I do not know of an instance where we harmed our integrity by lying or mis misrepresenting the facts as we knew the truth at the time. We moved good people into a financial management role. All right, guys, so we got one more coming up next. Uh, this was great. This is lessons learned, uh, things that they did right or, or things that tricked them into think they were doing things that were right. Very fascinating to me. I love this series. We got one more. I wish we had more, but uh, stay tuned. Make sure you follow, subscribe, comment, share this. This is old school real estate knowledge. Put this into practice. Apply this to your business. Whether you're in real estate or not, there's lessons to be learned here. So guys, once again, cheers, and we'll see you at the next episode.